Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, go ahead and hit the subscribe button down below and ring the notification bell because I post videos two times a week, sometimes three if I can manage. I'm definitely trying to up it to three times a week. So I'm very excited today because I have a new setup and I feel so professional and so good. If you saw my last vlog, you would know that I went to Ikea and I got myself a desk. That's pretty much the only thing that changed in my setup, but this big desk makes a huge difference because I have all of my stuff in front of me and nothing is rolling away from me. I can see myself in the mirror and I don't have to be like holding a million things and like dropping things on the floor. I've got my Post Malone flyaways, you know the drill. So since spring is right around the corner, it's been getting warmer. It's like in the 50s and 60s in the middle of the day and it feels like so nice and so good. I figured I would do a peachy, glowy, soft glam, perfect for spring look. So let's get started. So I already showered and I primed my face with my Truly Beauty CBD Glow Serum. That is my favorite after the shower, underneath makeup, like primer, serum type situation. So next, just to further prime my face, I'm gonna go in with the e.l.f. Poreless Putty Primer. This is what it looks like. It's supposed to be a good dupe for the Tatcha Silk Canvas. I've never tried that before because um, I can't afford it. Just gonna rub a little bit, warm it up in my hands, and then press it into my skin. I'm sorry that I haven't posted a makeup tutorial since the bloodlust. I've been like vlogging for some reason. I've been like super into it but I really want the main focus of my channel to be makeup so I'm sorry that I kind of fell off the makeup bandwagon for a second but I promise I have plenty of makeup tutorials coming don't go anywhere don't leave me and just to keep things light and fresh I'm gonna go in with my covergirl clean fresh skin milk this is in the shade 560 medium and it's a dewy finish blurs and perfections evens out skin tone sheer buildable coverage yes I've used this before it's definitely not a full coverage foundation but since I'm doing a fresh glowy look I figured this would be fine usually I like to do this with a beauty blender if it's more of a sheer foundation just so I can kind of build it up but I forgot to put my beauty blender and I'm kind of trapped in this corner so I'm not about to get up I'm gonna use an M447 brush from Morphe just blend this out on my face I would say it's a light coverage but it's definitely you could probably build it up Ooh, why is my face burning oh my face is burning I started using a spin brush like a Clarisonic for my face and there's different brush heads and I used a brush head that was a little bit more dense like not as soft today I like to like exfoliate and I think I might have like roughed up my skin too much yeah, that doesn't feel nice that doesn't feel nice at all this has never happened to me with this foundation before. I've used it probably twice before this and that hasn't happened. And I've also used the e.l.f. Poreless Beauty Primer. Yeah, I think that I may have like exfoliated my skin too hard with that spin brush. I take a little intermission and cool down my face for a sec. I feel like this did absolutely nothing to my face because I put on such a thin layer. I'm gonna go wet my beauty blender and try again because yeah that was weird okay i'm gonna put a little bit more of the foundation on a damp beauty blender and see if that doesn't irritate my face as much because i'm not like rubbing bristles on my face and see if i can get a little bit more coverage okay yeah this feels a lot better maybe it was just the brush this feels a lot better so maybe it was just the brush that was irritating my skin you can see now that it's definitely building up to a light to medium coverage now so i think i want to cream contour a little bit and i'm going to use my milk makeup little mini contour stick that I got in a package and it's in the shade Baked. And... I just think that a cream contour, if you're doing a lighter look, it gives more of a natural finish instead of a more powdery finish. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit more on the brush and then go around the perimeter of my forehead and take it back into my hairline a little bit just so it doesn't look so different. And I think it gives more of a natural, more sun-kissed, glowy finish. This feels like so luxurious just to be able to reach for all my stuff and have it in front of me. Oh my god. If you saw my setup in my previous video, you would be like, oh my god. So now I'm going to go in and put on some concealer. And I'm using the Kylie Concealer in the shade Birch. And I'm just going to go ahead and put that right in my dark circles. This is a really nice concealer color. And then I'm going to use this Cover FX Liquid Foundation Brush. It's a really small kabuki brush just to push that into my skin and blend it out. First, I like to tap it in just to really push it into my skin and make sure it's a nice even layer. And then I'll go in and soften up the edges a little bit. So something that I've been seeing a lot lately that I've wanted to get into is cream blush. I have this one cream blush by ColourPop. It's the shade Under Pressure. And I used it once before and it kind of like made my makeup 
like separate but maybe I was using it wrong so I think I want to give it another try because it looks really pretty when other people do it and I think maybe I just did it wrong the other time. I think maybe I'll just take the same brush that I used to blend out my concealer and I think I'll just put a little bit on there first, swirl it around, maybe just like dab some of it off on the back of my hand first so it's not so strong. See this is the thing, do I put powder on first and then the cream blush because I'm gonna actually no that wouldn't make sense okay hold on I feel like that looks cute I'm curious to see if when I put on the translucent powder to set my concealer if it kind of makes it disappear because we could always put powder blush on top of it to make it stronger if the translucent powder dulls it down a little bit but it does look very fresh and very nice i must say now i'm just going to take a little bit of my kylie jenner translucent setting powder on my beauty blender that i already used so it's a little bit damp and i'm just going to press that right underneath my eyes and everywhere that i put concealer I am just gonna let the powder sit around my nose for a little bit just to bake it because that's where i get the most oily now on a Morphe E3 fluffy powder brush, I'm gonna go into my Kylie bronzer in the shade Almond. Her powder products are great. I use her translucent powder, her blush, and her bronzer probably most of the time. That's just what I've been into lately. I wouldn't say that I'm a creature of habit because every time something new comes out, I love to try it. There are definitely products that work really well for me that I know if I use it, it's gonna look good. So I go back to them, but I don't have a specific every day, every time I do my makeup routine because that's like the fun thing about makeup is changing it up and trying out new products, finding new things that you love, things that you don't love so much. I feel like you could see a little bit of that cream blush underneath, like a little bit of a rosy pink undertone, but I think I am definitely gonna go over it with some powder blush because it's not good enough for me. So I'm just gonna tap a little bit into my Kylie blush in the shade we're going shopping. And I'm just gonna go over that cream blush and contour just a little bit, just to make everything come together. All right, I think the face is looking pretty good. I'm just gonna give myself a quick spray of the Anastasia Dewy Set because I do have a lot of powders on my face right now. If anybody has any hair gel suggestions or like styling product suggestions for these little flyaways like around your forehead, please let me know because they are the bane of my existence. If you guys watched my brow tutorial, you would know that I'm obsessed with soap brows. So basically what I do is I comb up my little brow hairs, grab a little spoolie. This is a Morphe M115. And I spray a little bit of setting spray into my soap brows and you rub the brush and the product. And then you comb your brow hairs upwards. But just to really get my brow hairs to lay flat, I back comb them a little bit just to really get the product in between the hairs so they stick to each other. And then I brush them straight up. And then once I have my brow in the shape that I want it, I go ahead and I take the end and I just press the hairs down so they don't go anywhere. Then I grab a little bit of my Anastasia Dip Brow in the shade Ebony. And then I'm gonna take a teeny Morphe eyebrow brush. I always wipe off the excess in the top of the cap so that I don't waste any product, but I can get tipped to be really precise and fine. And then I'll just fill in any sparseness that I have on the tail of my brow. I like to draw little hairs flicking upwards right in the corner. I don't know, I just like to square off my brows and have them look a little bit more bushy and like messy. Okay, so I have a new eyeshadow primer that I want to try today that I recently got. I'm not sure how new it is, but it's the e.l.f. Putty Eye Primer. When they came out with the Poreless Putty Primer as the Tatcha dupe, it broke the internet. And I saw the Putty Eye Primer and I was like, hmm, wonder what that's like. So, I haven't heard anybody talk about it or seen any reviews on it, so I literally have no idea. But I was interested, so I grabbed it and I'm going to use it today. Yeah, there was different shades. There was light, medium, and dark, I think. There was a few different shades. I'm gonna grab a Morphe M421, a little crease brush. This is what it looks like. It's sort of like a cream paint pot situation. So I'm just gonna dip into it with my brush, I guess. It says crease proof and smudge proof for 12 hours. So we'll see about that. That is a strong claim, my friend. But drugstore makeup has been killing it lately. So definitely gonna give it a fair shot. Not gonna make any judgments. I think I'm gonna use my finger for my other eye and just see if it makes a difference. It definitely feels a lot harder than the poreless putty primer. It's applying on smoother with my finger, but I just like to clean up the edges with a brush personally, because I just like to be precise. 
Definitely was a lot quicker applying it with a finger, that's for sure. But it does kind of melt onto your finger when you rub it into the little pot. It feels like it's kind of dragging and drying down a little bit, which is kind of weird, I don't know. All right, well, we shall see. So I have a few palettes in front of me right now. Oh wait, there was one more new product that I wanted to try, Thrive Cosmetics under eye highlighting stick it says ring light technology not really sure what that means it says brilliant eye brightener it's a crayon type situation i feel like i would use it underneath the arch of my brows oh that is bright okay that's actually really pretty i actually like that a lot that's really pretty i was not expecting that a little bit definitely goes a long way and i think blending it out with your finger helps give it a more natural glow i think this would also be a cute little inner corner highlight moment as well Okay, now that I have on my no crease, no smudge proof for 12 hours eyeshadow primer on, time to move on to eyeshadow. And I said I wanted to do a springtime, really wearable, peachy look. So I have three palettes in front of me. I have the Truly Madly Deeply ColourPop palette. Got some pinks, some neutrals, a few peachy shades. And then probably one of my favorite palettes ever, the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde palette. Okay, so I, I don't know. I might use a combination of these palettes, but I'm going to start off with the Truly Madly Deeply palette, and I'm going to grab the shade Lay Low. It's that lighter orangey shade, and I'm going to take that on a Morphe M502 fluffy crease brush, and I'm just going to tap that into my crease. So far, everything's looking normal and applying normally on top of that eyeshadow base. This is literally like a $5 eyeshadow primer and a less than $20 eyeshadow palette. I kind of feel like this eyeshadow base set itself in a way because it's not really sticky. The eyeshadow is going over it really nicely and it's showing up really pigmented and I didn't set it with anything. And when it dried down, it felt a little bit powdery almost. So I feel like it is almost self-setting in a way. It didn't advertise it to be that way, but that's what it kind of feels like and I am not mad at it at all. So now I think I'm gonna grab the shade next to it, Blossom, it's a shimmer shade, and I'm just gonna go in with my finger and put this all over my lid. Oh my God, stunning. That is super peachy, super pretty, super perfect. Everything is applying so nicely over this eyeshadow base. I'm actually really surprised. Elf is one of the cheaper drugstore brands, but They've been coming out with a lot of products lately and a lot of good ones. So I'm impressed, very, very impressed. I guess I'm only gonna use this palette because I'm gonna grab the shade Poodle. It's that matte pink shade and just put it in my outer V a little bit just to brighten it up. And I'm taking that on a Morphe M453. I'm angling it though just so it gets on one side of the brush and not on the other so I could control a little bit more the placement of it. I just think pink would tie this together a little bit. I'm realizing now I used so many drugstore products on my face today and they all look great. The CoverGirl Skin Milk, the eyeshadow primer, the eyeshadows. I mean ColourPop isn't technically a drugstore product but at Ulta it is like in that drugstore section and ColourPop's prices are super fair especially for the quality of their products. Like, I think I'm actually go gonna go in again with that Thrive Cosmetics eye brightener and I'm just gonna put it in my tear duct a little bit. Okay, and for liner today, I'm using the Anastasia Beverly Hills Liquid Liner. This is one of my all-time favorites. It glides over any eyeshadow look. It doesn't get stuck on glitters and stuff, and it's really nice and black. Okay, just to brighten up underneath my lower lash line, I'm grabbing that same pink shade Poodle. One bad thing about this palette is it doesn't have a mirror. I just think that the pink will really bring out the peachiness and just tie everything together. I have this Stila Liquid Eyeshadow. I honestly haven't used it in a while, so it might be like a little bit like crusty, but I think just to brighten up that inner corner on my lid, just to add a little extra brightness and glitter. And while I'm waiting for my lash glue to dry, I'm just gonna pop on some of my Pacifica Beauty Dream Big Mascara, the same mascara that I use in pretty much all my videos if I'm wearing fake lashes. So for lash today I'm using the Ardell 3D Felt Mink 854s. Ors, why did I say that like that? Ardell's lashes are amazing. They're so comfortable and lightweight and they look like luxury lashes depending on which ones you get. Tell me that is not a luxury looking lash. Some of Ardell's lashes are a little questionable but 3D Felt Mink, the Remy lashes, and the Double Up Wispies, expensive and they were like five bucks. So just to finish off the look now I'm gonna use my Milk Cosmetics Cream Highlighter. This is in the shade Slitzed. I think is what it's called. Um, I'm obsessed with this cream highlighter. It gives you the most gorgeous glow from within look. And I just rub my finger in it a little bit. 
like this and I just tap it on my cheeks. And it gives you a nice like dewy healthy glow. Since I used cream products today, I figured why not just use this cream highlighter just to top it all off. I think just to highlight my cupid's bow on my lip, I'm gonna use a little bit of this brightening pen. And it has a little sharpener on the back too. This is a very multi-purpose, full multi-purpose. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but this Thrive Cosmetics highlighter stick or whatever it is, definitely a big fan. That's cute. I'm obsessed with this. I honestly had this in my drawer for a little bit. I think I got it for Christmas and I love it. I have the ColourPop lippy pencil and the shade Bumble and I'm just gonna put this all over my lips and then just throw a gloss on top because I'm not really in the mood for a liquid lip today. If your lips are hella uneven and annoying, leave it in the comments down below because same. Now I'm just gonna take a little bit of the Fenty Diamond Bomb lip gloss in the shade Fenty Glow. I'm gonna give myself one last spritz of my favorite setting spray ever. The Anastasia Dewy Set. Okay guys, this is the final look and I love how it came out. I think it's super glowy and fresh for spring. It's a little peachy pink and it has some pops of glitter, but it's definitely everyday wearable. A lot of these products I used were actually very inexpensive, so that turned out well. Leave me a comment down below if you have any makeup or video ideas that you would like to see from me. As always, make sure to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell because I post two to three times a week. Okay, thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Bye.